Remember, the MOSFET drain current in operating in saturation is mu n C ox W by L times capital B G S minus V T the whole square, right. And uh, in, the, in the common source amplifier, what are we doing? We are the incremental voltage is appearing across the between the gate and the source. So, basically what we are seeing is that capital I D plus small i d causes, thank you, we are missing a half is half mu n C ox W by L times capital V G S plus small V G S minus capital V T the whole square. Does it make sense? Now, this uh, is nothing but 1 half mu n C ox W by L times V G S minus V T the whole square plus mu n C ox W by L times V G S minus V T. times small v g s plus half mu n c ox w by l small v g s ok. Right. and higher order derivatives of fortunately are, are 0. Okay. So, uh, this is i d plus small i d and this as you can see is capital I d. So, which basically means that small i d is mu n c ox w by l times v g s minus v t times small v g s plus the second order term in the Taylor series is this quantity. So, based on our discussions last week, what comment can we make about what constitutes a small signal? Pardon? Pardon? That is the small signal approximation. The question I am asking you now is what constitutes a what constitutes what is the limit for small signal operation? What do we compare it with? In other words, when VGS is small, that small is in relation to something else, correct? The question is what is the meaning? What is that something else? Yes? So, basically all small v g s where the first term in the Taylor series uh, expansion is or the first order term in the Taylor series expansion is much larger than the second order term. The higher order terms are anyway 0 here. So, uh, as long as mu n C ox W by L times capital V g s minus V t times V g s is much much larger than half mu n C ox W by L times small v g s square that basically is the definition of all small v g s which satisfies this inequality is considered a small signal. Now, a question of you know what is this much much greater than again that is a matter of definition right. Some people may say 10 x is uh, 10 is greater than 1, other people may say no, no, no 10 is not sufficiently larger than 1, maybe 100, okay, whatever, right. As long as you make a definition and stick to it, that is fine. So, uh, therefore, when you say V g s is a small signal, V g s must be compared to what quantity therefore, twice the gate overdrive voltage. 
again we see that this quantity the gate overdrive Vgs minus Vt which we call the gate overdrive voltage keeps appearing in the expressions. Does it make sense? All right. Okay, but remember that uh, the uh, the uh, the transistor current is a function of both the gate source volt in general. The current in the transistor is a function of both the gate source voltage and the. It's a three-terminal device. What is the drain current a function of? It is a function of both the gate source voltage and the drain source voltage. So, now what constitutes a small signal VDS? In saturation, what constitutes a linear, a small signal uh, change in VDS? 0. Why? I mean intuitively what is happening? All right, let me go back to VGS. If I plot the drain current as a function of gate source voltage in saturation, how will I, what curve will I get? Please understand the question carefully before you answer. The question is the transistor is operating in saturation, I am plotting, I am varying the gate source voltage and plotting the drain current. What do we expect to see? So, I am getting all answers except the correct one. Where is VDS Baba? Look at what am I plotting on the x axis? VGS. I am telling you the transistor is assumed to be operating in saturation. So, what comment can we make about the drain current as a function of the gate source voltage? Pardon? Yeah. So, basically up to Vt, the current is 0. Beyond that, what happens? It is a parabola. Okay. At some operating point, when we make a small signal approximation, what are we saying? We are approximating this curve by a straight line around the operating point. Does it make sense? Okay. All right. And uh, uh, the uh, what do you call um, now this as long as this straight line approximates the curve uh, reasonably well we are okay with calling it small thing all right okay by the way did we get sorry i think we made a this is fine yeah that's fine okay so now if i plot now what we uh, uh, the question we are trying to answer is what constitutes a small signal for VDS. So, for that what do we do? What should we plot and I mean of course, we can write the equations, but my, you know intuitively uh, graphically how would we do it? Plot ID versus VDS and you will get a curve like that. Okay. And uh, that curve in the saturation, this is the saturation region, that is the boundary of saturation. In the saturation region, what comment can we make about the drain current? It is constant, all right. So, around this operating point in the saturation region, therefore, what constitutes a small signal? Any swing as long as you do not get into the linear region constitutes a small signal because at least under the assumptions that we have made the curve is a is a is a straight line that is parallel to the 
to the uh, x axis correct the fact that it is parallel to the x axis is irrelevant right as long as we assume that it is a straight line right you will find that if you draw a tangent at that point it will coincide with the with the straight line as long as you don't enter the linear region okay so uh, you know as per our simplified model that we have been using so far the drain current is independent of the drain source voltage and therefore any swing constitute any swing at the drain source uh, between the drain and the source constitutes a small signal as long as the transistor does not enter the linear is that clear and again it is based on uh, the uh, the simple thing that uh, what constitutes small signal is where the first order term in the Taylor series does a good job of approximating the true characteristic right in the uh, in the case of the gate show swing we can see that definitely uh, uh, you know uh, the straight line deviates from the curve right so therefore you can only uh, have small excursions around the operating point whereas in the case of the drain source voltage we can see that large swings still uh, the characteristic is uh, since we assume that the characteristic is a straight line in saturation uh, parallel to the x axis it follows that any swing constitutes a small swing is that clear people very good so coming back to our common source amplifier now This is R1, this is R2, let me take the simplest possible one, so I will put RL here, this is VDD, this is our infinite capacitor we do not have to worry about it at this point simply because we already know what constitutes an infinite capacitor. So, for our analysis we will assume that the capacitor is indeed infinite. Hmm? Okay. Now, the question I would like to ask is well we know that if V i is a small signal then the incremental drain swing is you know whatever minus g m times uh, minus g m times uh, V i times R l. Okay. Now, the question is of course, I know that V i must be a small signal right uh, for this analysis to be valid, uh, but the question I would like to ask is what happens if I go on making V i larger and larger. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, what do you I mean let us uh, uh, let us take an example where V i is uh, some a sin omega t. Okay and uh, what comment can we make about the absolute potential at the gate let us plot as a function of time what is the quiescent value of the gate potential v d d times r 1 by r 1 plus r 2. Okay. So, what comment can we make about uh, uh, the waveform at the gate Pardon? Um, yeah, basically the total voltage at the gate is the sum of the quiescent value plus the increment. What is the increment? A sin omega t. So, what comment can you make about the total waveform at the gate? Yeah, it will be basically a sinusoid of amplitude A riding over a quiescent or DC value of V d d times R 1 by R 1 plus R 2. So, it basically is something like this. All right. What comment can we make about the quiescent value of the drain the drain potential? V d d minus capital I d times R L, where capital I d is quiescent value, which can be found from 
knowledge of the threshold voltage and basically the properties of the transistor as well as the gate source voltage. So, under quiescent circumstances the output voltage would have been like that. Now, what happens when you apply the signal what, what comment can we make about the total waveform at the drain? It is inverting. So, basically it does something like that right. As you can see I am not a great artist. So, you should assume that the blue waveform is indeed a sine wave. Hmm? So, this amplitude is A what comment can you make about that distance? That distance is yeah what is it? It is not minus that is the, the amplitude is G m R L times A all right. Okay. So, as we keep going uh, you know as time keeps marching and in the in the positive half of the input cycle namely uh, uh, that part what comment uh, do we uh, do you I mean can we make about uh, the uh, the region of operation of the transistor. So, originally the transistor was operating let us say with a constant V g s under question circumstances uh, this is a, a V d s and this is I d under question circumstances we were there. So, when we apply an input voltage what comment can we make about the region of operation of the transistor is it going deeper into saturation or is it going closer towards the triode region it is going closer to the triode region and why. because the voltage across the drain and the source is decreasing. So, in which direction are we going? I mean this is the triode region right that is the boundary of the triode region. Uh, we can go this way, we can go this way, which way are we going? Towards the left of course and uh, upwards or downwards. So, what is happening? The, the gate source voltage is increasing in the positive half of the input cycle we can see that the gate source voltage is increasing. So, we are as time goes by we are operating on a different VGS curve right and the VDS is reducing. So, basically we are going into the triode region in that general direction all right. So, if you make A too large what will eventually happen? The drain potential will go lower than the gate potential and the moment it goes lower than the gate potential by ok. So, uh, what is the larger I mean what is the limit for triode region operation? V d s is V g s minus V t. So, in English what does this mean that the source potential is common to both sides. So, we can uh, we can scratch that off. So, basically this is equivalent to saying that the transistor the NMOS transistor goes into triode if if the absolute potential of the drain goes one threshold below the absolute potential of the does it make sense. So, with this you do not have to worry about the source voltage as soon as the absolute potential of the drain goes one threshold below the absolute potential of the gate the transistor enters the triode region all right. So, we will continue.